what we believed were that the, there was a magic in the experience of the thing. And really, <laughs> the magic here is just Pokemon, right? The magic here is Pokemon, right? So one of the biggest non-Marvel, non-Harry Potter, non-blowing up stuff in space franchises in human history, okay? And people are not going to enter. This is what is hard, was hard for us to get our head around it, and I think it's hard for everybody to get their head around it. People will not enter into new behaviors and new categories because they're curious about what's possible. Nobody has the time for that, right? So if you can't make something great, you make something great again. Uh, and so that's basically what happened here, right? So, so Pokemon was revived uh, into this new capability. It's not really a technological moment uh, or a, a, a technological or design innovation. It's really the capability to capitalize on the IP, right? On a $24 billion piece of IP. And in fact, and this is what's important and what nobody <coughs> tells when they tell the story of Pokemon Go, it's actually, there's only one company that could really build this, and that's not really Pokemon, it's actually Google, right? It's actually the people who own the data who were actually running this game that two people in here played uh, called Ingress, and over five years, maybe about 10 million people altogether, uh, actually assembled the enormous locative data set that Pokemon Go is actually built on, right? So basically, nobody else could have done this, right? You need to have $24 billion worth of IP and, you know, some, you know, multi, you know, something worth way more than that relative to the data in order to actually pull this off, right? So, um, and I think that's kind of good news in a way because probably if you're in this room, what you're working with are brands. Um, what you're working with are the things that evoke ideas and emotions and feelings. And that's actually what brings people to the table, right? It's not the technological ca capabilities to do it. Otherwise, it all would have happened way, 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 way quicker. Um, so, so this overnight success, right, all you need is just like, you know, billions of dollars worth of IP. All right, so, um, um, okay, so after that comes what, right? So after this, so we reach this, and, and I think there's this narrative like, oh, now, now there's, now location-based gaming is gonna be enormous. I have the decks, like they come in like for a day, right? You're like, now, now is the time. It's not really, not, it's not true. It's really not true. It's, you know, it's, this is a, this is a, um, it's a capability that has been possible for a long time. Uh, there's this moment where it, it really enjoys the spotlight because of what it's actually bringing forward, which is a revival of something that a lot of people have from their adolescence or their youth or whatever, and they have a chance to kind of explore that again in these interesting ways. So the question is, what comes after that? And that's, that's, what, I'm, that's what I'm interested in. And I think it doesn't look like, um, it doesn't look like connecting us to places. I think that that, um, I think that's just gonna, that's just gonna become commonplace. It's just gonna, it's like, it's like, of course your Instagram photo knows where you are, right? Like, I know how hard that is, right? But it doesn't matter, right? It, do, it just doesn't matter, right? It's like, it's like, that's smooth at this point. The thing that's not really in there, like there's this other human instinct that's underdeveloped, and that's what I'm interested in, which is not connecting people to physical space, but to real synchronized time. That is, I believe, totally underexplored, underutilized, and unexploited in the positive sense of exploit. Okay, so the question to you, all of you, is like, what have you got? Like, what are you doing, right, that actually brings back the feeling that people had when MASH had 125 million Americans? 125 million Americans, that's almost Pokemon-type numbers, right? Like, 125 million Americans doing the same thing at the same time. And when I ask you what you've got like that, I don't just mean, like, what are you doing? I mean, what have you got in your life like that? Right, because none of us have that anymore. None of us have that experience anymore of actually feeling synchronized, of experiencing the same thing as a lot of people at the same time. That's not really how Twitter functions at this point. It's definitely not how television functions. It's not how Instagram functions, it's not how Facebook functions. You know, like, like, like all these things have effectively desynchronized us. And the question is, how do we, how do we make it feel like we're part of one another's lives again? In a, in a real time way. I can tell you what it doesn't look like, right? It definitely doesn't look like this, right? It definitely doesn't look like feeling like the whole world is just being constructed around me, right? It has to start to feel like it's constructed around us in some way.